Hey, my yarny friends, I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today's video, I'm going to show you how you can cover your toilet paper roll and have it look really pretty and classy and you can do this for whatever season or time of year that you want. Now this one I did in Halloween colors and I added a pretty purple loopy flower on top. This one I did in holiday or Christmas sparkle colors and added again a loopy flower on top. It's a really fun way to decorate your guest bathroom and hide that roll of toilet paper and people still know it's there if they need it. <laughs> okay, today I'm gonna show you how to make one in fall color so that you can make one in whatever seasons that you want or you can just make one to match the colors of your bathrooms. It's a lot of fun to make, it works up quick it also makes a really fun gag gift at Christmas because you could maybe roll up some money inside the, the roll or not, stick it inside, but they can also get a beautiful little cover for their toilet paper roll. So lots of fun uses and lots of fun ways to change up the colors of our TP or toilet paper roll cover. Now you can find this free crochet pattern as always on my blog and again I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make your toilet paper roll cover you're going to need approximately 2.5 ounces of yarn. That's about half a skein, I mean half a cake, so it doesn't take very much at all. Another great way to use up some of your yarn stash and make something fun and useful. I'm going to be using this yarn here. This is a leftover yarn I got from Michaels. It is a medium weight number four acrylic yarn. And then I'm also gonna use some of this gold for some contrast. All your yarn needs to be a medium weight number four yarn. Now you can use a cotton or you can use an acrylic. These are all acrylic yarns in different colors of the Michaels Impeccable. This one is all acrylic yarn, medium weight number four. I love this yarn metallic in uh, the Hobby Lobby yarns. And I wanted the sparkle because I have a lot of these left over and I have some fun projects for Christmas that I want to do. And the neat thing about this is if you make this in acrylic or even cotton, you can toss it in the wash as much as needed. So don't worry about it getting a little bit yucky. Use those cotton or acrylic yarns and you can wash it right in the wash with your towels. Now don't use wool, that's 100% wool because remember wool will felt, okay? And it'll shrink up on you. So about two and a half ounces of any acrylic yarns. This one I striped with those colors. This one I also striped, but I striped it a little bit different. And today what we're going to do is I'm gonna start with the gold and then I'm going to do the bottom portion of the cover in this variegated, all right? That way I kind of get some contrast. You can use variegated ombre, striping yarn, solids, whatever that you want and use whatever combination of colors that you want to match your bathroom and like I said, for any holiday or season. All right, so we're gonna stitch with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle for weaving in ends and attaching your flower. And then of course you need a pair of scissors. And then you need, of course, your basic size toilet paper roll. We're going to begin at the top and work our way down. So we're going to start with our slip knot. We're going to chain five. We're going to put the tail of yarn over our hook, pull it through that loop to form our circle. If you want to use a magic circle or another form of making a circle, that's totally up to you. Remember, you do what works best for you. All right, so I tied that stay knot and I'm gonna go in, pull up a loop and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. Now we're going to stitch nine more double crochets. So we have a total of 10 counting that chain. You 
You'll also notice that I'm stitching over that tail of yarn, and that's so I can close up the hole at the top. All right, let's see how many I've done so far. So our chain three counts as one, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so we're gonna join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now on this project, I'm going to go ahead and close up that hole. That way it's taken care of and I don't have to do it later. So I'm going to thread that yarn onto my needle. And then I'm just gonna go around that and gather that up, making sure that hole closes. And then we'll just go back and forth, going through some stitches and some fibers just to make sure it's not going to open up. Remember, we may have to put this through the laundry a few times and we don't want the top coming undone. We'll grab those scissors and clip that tail of yarn. And so now for row one, we have 10 double crochets. We joined our chain three and chained three. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet for row two. We're going to stitch a double crochet in the same stitch as that chain three. And now we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those 10 double crochets around. There we go. So I'm stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets working all the way around and then I'll join back to my chain three. I stitched two double crochets in each of those 10. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and again chain three. And so for row two, I have 20 double crochets. Now row three is basically the same as row two because we want the top of our TP cover to be nice and flat. And so what we're going to do our chain three counts is our first. We'll again stitch a double crochet and the same stitch as our chain three and then two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. And so again, we are stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And this will give us that nice flat top for the top of our TP cover. Then we'll stitch around and join back to our chain three. I stitched two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. For row three, we have 40 double crochets. We're going to join to that chain three and chain three. Now row four, we're going to be increasing a little bit different. So our chain three counts is our first. We're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two, not in the same stitch as our chain three. One, two, three. In the next stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. And so this is our repeat for row four. One double crochet in the next three, one, two, whoops, three, <laughs> and two double crochets in the next, one and two. One double crochet in the next three, two double crochets in the next, and repeat all the way around. One, two, three, one in each of the next three, and two double crochets in the next, one and two. 
and we'll repeat this working all the way around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row four, stitching one double crochet in the next three and then two in the next and repeat all the way around. You should end with two double crochets in the last stitch, join to your chain three and chain three. And on row four, you're going to have 50 double crochets. All right, now I'm going to change colors here. So I'm going to take out that chain three. If you're changing colors, you wanna go ahead and cut your yarn and bring in your new color before you do that chain three. Because if not, you'll have the wrong color. You'll have a gold instead of the next color. Like I'm using this gold color and I'm switching to my variegated. All right, all righty. So I'm gonna chain three in the variegated fall colors. I'm going to double crochet in the next two stitches. And then the next two stitches is where we stitch those two double crochets in the same stitch. And we're going to stitch a front post in those two stitches. And a front post is where, front post double crochet is you're stitching over the post of the stitch instead of up here. You're still stitching a double crochet, but you're going around that post. All right, and so for row five, we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. That brings us to those next two stitches that we stitched in the same stitch, and we're going to stitch a front post in those next two stitches. And now we're beginning the sides of our TP cover. One double crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and then front post double crochet in the next two. We'll repeat this all the way around and then again join back to our chain three with a slip stitch. I completed row five. We have one double crochet in the next three, then a front post in the next two and repeat. You're going to end on two front posts, double crochets. We're going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch. And now we're gonna slip stitch in that next double crochet and then chain three. And we're doing that because we're going to place a half double crochet V stitch in that center of each of those three double crochets. The chain three counts as a half double crochet, chain one. Now we're going to half double crochet in that same stitch. And chain one. Now we're gonna skip over to the next two front post double crochets and stitch a front post double crochet in those two front post double crochets. Chain one. That brings us to the next three double crochets. We're going to skip the first one and go to the next one. We're going to stitch a half double crochet V stitch. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through all three loops and chain one. Then we'll have double crochet in that same stitch. That's our half double crochet V stitch. On this first one, we did a chain uh, three that counted as a half double crochet chain one and then one half double crochet. All right, so chain one, we're gonna skip over to the next two front post 
double crochet stitches and stitch a front post double crochet in each of those two chain one go to the middle double crochet of those next three and stitch a half double crochet V stitch which again is a half double crochet chain one and half double crochet and then chain one now see how that's looking as we work around two front post double crochets and the two front post double crochets chain one half double crochet V stitch in the center of those three double crochets chain one and repeat so I've chained one I'm going to move over here to my two front post double crochet stitches and stitch one in each chain one there's my three double crochets stitch a half double crochet V stitch in the center of that middle one or the center double crochet so there's the three we chained one half double crochet V stitch in the center double crochet and chain one and we'll repeat this working all the way around I completed row six we have our two front post double crochets chain one and then a half double crochet V stitch in that center of each of the three double crochets around here's my last two front post double crochets and chain one now we began with the chain three that counted as a half double crochet chain one so we want to join to the second chain of those three with a slip stitch now we're going to slip stitch in that chain one space of that first V stitch and again chain three all right and again that chain three counts as a half double crochet chain one and we're going to half double crochet in that chain one space and chain one now again we'll pop over to those next two double crochet front post double crochets and stitch a front post double crochet in those two front post double crochets chain one then we'll go to the chain one space of the half double crochet and stitch our half double crochet V stitch all right and so what our repeat is is a front post double crochet in each of the front post double crochet chain one half double crochet V stitch in the chain one space of the half double crochet V stitch from that previous row and then chain one so again we'll go to the next two front post double crochets and stitch those chain one we'll go to the chain one space of the V stitch that is a half double crochet V stitch and stitch a half double crochet chain one and half double crochet for our half double crochet V stitch and chain one and repeat front post double crochet in the two front post double crochets chain one half double crochet V stitch in the chain one space of the half double crochet V stitch from the previous row and chain one all right so front post double crochet in the two front post double crochets chain one and half double crochet V stitch in the chain one space of the half double crochet V stitch and chain one and again we'll repeat this working all the way around and join to the second chain of that chain three I completed row seven stitching our front post double crochets in our front post double crochets chain one half double crochet 
V stitch in the chain one space of our half double crochet V stitches, chain one and repeat. I join to the chain two of my beginning chain three, slip stitched in the chain one space and chain three, one, two, three, because remember that chain three counts as a half double crochet chain one on these rows. And so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to repeat row seven for eight more rows. Exactly what we did on row seven, two front post double crochets, one in each, half a uh, chain one, half double crochet V stitch in the chain one space, chain one and repeat all the way around and you're going to do that for eight more rows. So I have completed those eight additional rows and you can really see how those front post stitches really pop out and how those V stitches look really nice in between those rows. I think it's a very classy pattern and like I say, it's not your granny's old granny stitch teepee cover. Although I do love those, just to be clear, I do still love the granny stitch style ones. I like this because it has a little bit of classiness to it and it's just beautiful. But we need to tie off and on your last row, we join to our chain three. We're going to cut our yarn. We're going to pull that loop to the back. There we go and tie off to the back. So we have a nice finish there. We don't put any trim. We don't put any edge or anything on here. It's just that last row stitched exactly like all the other rows. So it has sort of a ripply edge and I really love that. All right, so I'm going to weave this in and again, weave it in good because this is going to go through the laundry a couple of times sitting in the back of the bathroom. It's going to get splashed with water and possibly other things that we're not going to talk about, especially if you have grandsons. <laughs> All righty, so I'm going to weave that in securely and clip it. Now, if you don't want to put a flower on the top of this, you don't have to, but I think it makes it really nice to have that loopy flower on the top for just, you know, little crowning edge. All right, I'm just loving the way this fall colors one has turned out. All right, so we're going to begin by forming that loop again, only this time we're only going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, pull it through, and again, if you want to use the magic circle, you certainly can, or some other method to make your circle. All right, now in this chain four loop, we're going to stitch, of course I'm bringing that up with the chain one to bring it up on top, and we're going to stitch 10 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, got a little knot there, but I'm going to keep going since this is a demo. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more and 10. We'll join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch and chain eight. Now, we're going to go only in the front loop. And remember, you have a back loop and a front loop. We're gonna go in that front loop and slip stitch and chain eight. One, two, oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we'll go in the front loop of our next stitch and stitch a slip stitch. And we'll do this all the way around. 
two, three, four, goodness, five, six, seven, eight. Again, we're going to stitch in the front loop a slip stitch. And we'll do this all the way around, only stitching in the front loop on this row. I repeated that all the way around, stitching eight chains, slip stitch in the next stitch, so we have 10 loopy petals. Well, we want to double this up. So we're going to move to the back and stitch in those stitches where we only stitched in the front loop and we're going to stitch in the back loops. So here's where we joined and we're going to chain eight chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the previous row, row two of our flower, only we're going to stitch in the back loops. All right, so we'll go to that first back loop and stitch a slip stitch and chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we'll go to that next back loop only and slip stitch and chain eight. All right, now we'll go to the next back loop. And you'll notice I've pushed my petals forward so I can find those back loop stitches. Slip stitch and chain eight. Slip stitch in the next back loop and chain eight. And that's going to give us a second row of loops to make a nice loopy flower. All right, so we'll just continue this around. Chain eight, slip stitch in the back loop, and chain eight. I've stitched that second row of loops. So you have 10 loops on the first row, 10 loops on the second row. All right, I've cut my yarn, and I've left a long tail of yarn long enough so I can sew it onto our TP cover. All right, so I'm just gonna tie that off. All right, but we do want to make sure there isn't a hole in the center. So we're going to pull that tail of yarn where we started. There we go. And just weave that in securely so it's not going to open up on us. We don't want to send a hole in the center of our pretty little loopy flower. All right. All right, so our flower's ready, and we're gonna sew it onto our TP cover. All right, so we wanna sew it to the center. And so what I like to do before I get started is to just make a loop across, making sure I'm going through stitches and not through holes. And I do this when I put on buttons as well. I, it just, I think it just makes it more secure. All right, so now all we're going to do is I'm going to hold this, make sure it's right where it needs to be. And I'm going to go in and out. And I want to try to follow those lines. Let me open that up a little bit. Where we stitch. That way you don't have any stitches going other directions. They're just going the way that the center of that worked. Let me bring this down a little. There we go. And you want to make sure you get this on securely because it's going to go through the wash. There we go. It's getting tight. So I'm going to pull that this way. I want to make sure I've got it in the center of my circle. There we go. All righty. So let's make a few more stitches. Make sure it's going to stay put. There we go. I'll check the top again, make sure it's where I want it to be. It is. All right, now I'm going to take this tail and this tail. I'm going to tie them together. Again, I want this to stay put. I don't want the hole in the top of my teepee cover to open, and I don't want the flower to come off. All right, so I'm going to make that knot. There we go. And we'll clip that. And now it's ready to put on my roll of TP. All right, let's slide it on our roll of TP. Mm 
nice good fit fancy little flower and a classy TP cover isn't that pretty so now I'm ready for fall I'm ready for Halloween and I'm ready for the Christmas holidays boy I need to make some more because I need some for Valentine's Day for spring for summer this would be beautiful with with flowers up here and bright pinks so this is a great way to decorate your guest bathroom or your own bathroom with some beautiful teepee covers for all the holidays and use up your scrap yarns to make something beautiful and useful mm -hmm.